Hi, I'm Homeworks by Precept Consultant Megan Hudson. Today we're going to look inside of the fourth edition of Science 5. This will be the parent-led textbook kit. So we're going to take a look inside of the Science 5 teacher's manual, the Science 5 student textbook, and the Science 5 activity manual, and the activity manual answer key. So join me as we look inside of these books. This is the Science 5 teacher edition. Science 5 is a year-long course with 180 lessons, and it is split into six units. Those six units are called Out of the Earth, From the Beginning, Because of the Climate, In Perfect Balance, By Waves of Energy, and Inside the Body. The beginning of this book is going to have a lot of information for you to help show you how this book is laid out and how you would teach lessons. This is great information to read before you begin teaching, and we'll be talking about some of it as we do an example lesson in a few moments. I'm going to pause here for a second to talk about the science process skills. Science process skills are words that we're going to be using throughout Science 5. They're words like hypothesizing, predicting, measuring, experimenting. These are words that we're going to practice by doing experiments and activities. So throughout the year, you're going to be developing these skills like observing and inferring and classifying. So these are the science process skills. The last couple pages in here show us about assessments and grading and scheduling. And then that brings us to the lesson plan overviews. The lesson plan overview gives us an idea of what is covered in each chapter. There's a page like this for every chapter in the book. And today the example lessons that we're going to talk about are going to come from chapter 5. So I'm going to jump to the chapter 5 lesson plan overview. This chapter is about weather. And when I'm looking at this table, I can quickly see which lesson numbers are part of this chapter which pages in the TE I will be using, which pages I'm assigning my student in their textbook, and which pages I'm assigning out of the student activity manual. I also have all my objectives for those different lessons, and I have a list of the science process skills we're gonna be using in the lessons as well. When I'm looking at this list, I can quickly see if we have an activity or an experiment assigned for that day, Sometimes we also have these answers in Genesis activities to do that will relate a biblical worldview with one of the concepts we're working on in our chapter. I also can see our chapter review and our chapter test at the end of the lesson plan overviews. So these are the pages that I would use when I am creating my lesson plans for the week because I can quickly see the student pages and the activity manual pages that I would be assigning my child to take care of that week. That brings us to the beginning of the book, and we're going to jump ahead to chapter five. Now, chapter five is actually the beginning of the third unit, and at the beginning of every unit, we have one of these pages that shows us a, a condensed version of those lesson plan overviews we were just looking at. So I see that this is lesson number 63, and this is the start of my chapter five. I do have a chapter introduction and a preparation for reading. I would be guiding a quick little discussion with my child before I would assign this section for them to read. And then after they were done reading, I would go to this teach for understanding section. There are a list of questions that I could ask my child, and I like to use these as a guide to help guide our conversations. I don't necessarily have to ask every single question, and sometimes I like to even add in my own questions, but this would give me an idea of what the main concepts were for what they just read about in their book. So it will guide our discussion and make sure that we are staying on track and that we are understanding the main ideas for the day. I also noticed that I have an activity that I could do and I have some background information that I need to read through. The background information is great to read through before you start teaching the lesson so that you can help incorporate that information into the discussion that you're having during the Teach for Understanding section. The activities are optional, but they're a great way to practice those science process skills and also to get your hands involved and not just have book work, but to be able to make something more memorable because you're getting to touch and feel and try things. So we like to do the activities just as extra reinforcement and to make science more fun. At the end of this lesson, I know I've reached the end because I see this activity manual note. 
I see that I need to assign page 81, which is a looking ahead page, and it will give us a preview for what we will be seeing in this chapter. I'm gonna go ahead and flip now to the next page. This is lesson number 64 and 65. I see my textbook pages and my activity manual pages that I would be assigning to my child. I also see my objectives, my material list, anything I might need from the teacher toolkit CD. That teacher toolkit CD is attached to the back cover of this teacher edition book. I also see the vocabulary words that I will be introducing today during our lesson. Now this is a two part lesson, so two days worth of lesson. And anytime it's two parts like this, you'll find this little note here to give suggestions of how to split this lesson up. There is no right or wrong way to split a lesson. You can do all the instruction on the first day and all the activities on the second day, or you could split the instruction between two days and then also split the activities between the two days. It's really up to you and how you wanna meet the needs of your family. And again, there's no right or wrong way of how to split this lesson up. I notice here that I have an introduction for today's lesson and another preparation for reading. So we would have a quick discussion about the information that they are suggesting we talk about, and then I would be assigning the pages for my child to read. After my child's read the pages, we would start through the Teach for Understanding and having a discussion about the main concepts that they've read about in their lesson for the day. And I would also be incorporating the background information that I have here. And I see that I have an activity that I would probably wanna to do to make today's lesson more fun. I notice there's no note here about the activity manual, so I'm gonna keep going to the next page where I'm going to notice that lesson 64 and 65 have continued on to the next page, and this is still part of the Teach for Understanding section right here. I do notice on this page, and these are the student textbook pages, but I noticed built into this student textbook page, I've got these quick check questions. Every couple pages in this book, you're gonna find these quick check questions that are just questions that your student could answer to help understand the main idea of what they just read in their textbook. And then we have the answers in the teacher edition. So this is a quick way for me to make sure that they've really grasped the main idea once they've finished reading their pages on their own. I also see on this page I've got more background information and I've got a couple more activities. This one looks like a fun one since we're talking about the atmosphere. This activity is telling us we should make a barometer so that we can talk about air pressure. I do notice here that I have a note here about the activity manual, which means I have reached the end of lessons 64 and 65. I also see my assessment note. This particular set of lessons has a quiz, quiz 5A, and that quiz is in the teacher toolkit at the back of this book. I'm gonna flip ahead now. Some activities or experiments are built directly into the student textbook. This is one of those activities. I can tell that because of this activity symbol. This is an experiment that you would want to make sure you do with your child. It has questions in your student activity manual as well, so you can follow along and fill in information as you do the experiment, and then you would be writing up your conclusions also in your activity manual. I do have questions to teach for understanding as we're doing the experiment and after we're done with the experiment, and I also see here that I have a note about a rubric. If you needed a rubric to grade the experiment, those are also on the teacher toolkit CD, and sometimes they'll give you a specific name of a rubric that you would want to find on that CD. Other times you might just say, um, I need a prepared rubric and you're just gonna use a general one. I'm gonna flip now ahead to the back where we're gonna find the appendix. In the appendix, you're going to find Bible action truths, Bible promises, a section on explaining the gospel, and your materials list. So Bible action truths are words or phrases, in the case of the Bible promises, of things that you might see within our year of Science 5. You might want to have a discussion about these words. And these words are listed in the back of this book with Bible verses and a brief description about it. So as you are having a conversation about these different words or different biblical phrases, you can look up those Bible verses and you can have a discussion about what the Bible says about these things. 
we also have a materials list in the back of this book. So I really appreciate that they've provided this list of all the materials we could possibly need for Science 5. And the way this works is this list is alphabetized. And for instance, we were looking at chapter five. So I would say, oh, in the fifth column, I see I have an X here, I need modeling clay. And I would go down the column, oh, I need a compass that will show me directions. I need large foam cups, I need a drinking straw, so I can make my list of what I need from this material list and I wouldn't have to go and look up each individual item from each lesson. I'm going to flip now to the very back cover. This is your teacher toolkit CD. Some of the things that you will find on this CD are the activity manual answer keys a game bank, instructional aids, a materials list that you could print out and write on. You have your National Science Education content standards. You have the quizzes and those quiz answer keys. You have rubrics to use for grading. There's also information about science fair and two-day lessons and visuals. So if a lesson calls for a visual aid, those visual aids are going to be on this teacher toolkit, which is attached to the back cover of your teacher edition textbook. This is my Science 5 student textbook. The front cover is smaller than a sheet of paper, and the book is about a centimeter thick. I'm going to jump open to my Unit 3 and then go to Chapter 5, which is what we were looking at in our teacher edition today. As I flip through some of these pages, you'll probably notice all the different graphs and pictures that are mixed in in every page. You might even notice some of these bold words mixed in. Those are our vocabulary words that we will be learning about in this chapter. This page right here is that experiment that was built in the, into the student textbook. There will also be a correlating page in the student activity manual for them to write down their information as they're doing the experiment and to also write their conclusions. I also noticed this quick check question. These are mixed in every few pages so that we can make sure that we're understanding the reading that we're doing throughout our student textbook. So your child could do those on their own before going over the rest of the lesson with the teach for understanding portion. Here's another experiment that's built into the textbook. And then at the end of the chapter, there's always a chapter summary. It will give us all of the vocabulary words we learned for that chapter, and it will give us a list of key ideas that were also discussed in this chapter. I'm going to flip to the back now. In the back of this book, there is a glossary. So this is a great place to be able to send your child to look for a definition of something if they don't remember. Practice those dictionary skills and also just reemphasize those vocabulary words for us. So that is the Science 5 student textbook. This is the Science 5 activity manual. So this is the book that my child would be writing in. Since we've been looking at chapter five, I'm gonna go ahead and go to chapter five in this activity manual so we can see what the pages look like for reinforcement of what we just saw. Each chapter does start with a looking ahead page to get an idea of an overview of what our entire chapter will be about and to see what the student already knows about these concepts. As I flip through, you might recognize some of these pictures that are similar to what we just saw in the student textbook. This activity symbol right here tells me that this is the page that goes with that experiment that we saw in both the TE and in the student textbook. So the student would be writing their hypothesis and their procedure and their conclusions on this page. I also want to point out that at the bottom of these pages, it does give me some notes. This tells me that it's chapter five. This one says lesson 73, and it tells me the page numbers for where in my student book I would be going to look if I couldn't find an answer or I couldn't remember something, then I could go back and look at those pages. This one tells me that this is a reinforcement page. This page before is actually part of a study guide and it tells me at the bottom that this is a review page. 
So anytime my child can't find an answer or can't remember an answer, I'm able to quickly see, oh, go look at these pages. Go look up, go look up those pages and find the answer on those pages. So it's a great study skill that you would be helping your child build. And then this would actually end this chapter. You see that it is a thinking it through page. It also says review at the bottom. So between this and reviewing the chapter summary with the vocabulary words and those key concepts, that's what we would be using to study for our chapter five test. And this is the end of the science five activity manual. To go along with the student activity manual is the activity manual answer key. There is no instruction in this book. This is purely the answers to the questions that your child is answering in their activity manual. So this is a great time saver, especially if you have multiple children. You can quickly check their work, make sure that they are getting those concepts correct, and then have them make corrections as necessary. And this will make your grading a lot quicker. So this is the activity manual answer key to go along with the activity manual. The only part that I didn't show you that does come in the Science 5 textbook kit is the test packet and the test answer key packet. Inside of the test packet, you will find a chapter test for every chapter in Science 5, and the answer key will provide all the answers for those tests. If you have any questions about anything in Science 5 that you saw today, please feel free to reach out to your local Homeworks by Precept consultant. We would love to answer any of the questions that you may have. I hope you have a great day.